In this lesson, we'll answer two questions based on complex ion equilibrium. The first question reads, a 200 milliliter sample of a solution that is 1.5 times 10 to the power of negative 3 molar in CuNO32 is mixed with a 250.0 milliliter sample of a solution that is 0.2 molar in NH3. After the solution reaches equilibrium, what concentration of Cu2 plus remains? The first thing that I want to do to tackle this question is show you the balanced chemical equation between copper 2 plus ions with NH3. So pretend that we have copper 2 plus aqueous coming together with NH3. Now normally what you would assume is that you would form a product that looks like this where we have Cu NH3 2 because generally the superscript here becomes the subscript of the other molecule and vice versa. But that's not necessarily the case. In fact, if you take a look at the illustration below, in order for copper 2 plus to be satisfied in a chemical reaction, it needs four molecules of ammonia as shown here. And because of that, we would have to put a subscript of four and a charge of 2 plus. The reason for this is because of copper's electron configuration. And it's sometimes useful to think about the electron configuration of copper 2 plus ions in terms of the entire set of valence shell orbitals. We won't get into that, but keep that in mind for this question. So because we have this product forming, we need to put a coefficient of 4 in front of NH3. Now because this is an equilibrium problem, I'll create an ice table showing the initial change in equilibrium concentrations of each of these molecules. So I'll write down I, C, E. Notice in the question that we are mixing two solutions together. Originally, when it was 250 milliliters of NH3, its concentration was 0.20. But if you're mixing two solutions together, the concentration will obviously change because it's becoming diluted. And you have to factor that in moving forward. So we have 250 milliliters of one solution coming together with 200 milliliters of the other. And now we have a new volume of 450 milliliters. Originally, we had a concentration of NH3 that was 0.20. So 0.20 is the same thing as 0.20 moles per liter. And I'll multiply this by its original volume to get the number of moles. I'll then take the number of moles and divide by this number to come up with its new concentration. So one step at a time, I'll multiply this now by 250 milliliters. And in liters, it's this number. Let's find out what that number is. 0 0.20 times 0.25, and that's the amount of moles of NH3 originally. We'll divide this by the new volume, 0 0.4500. That's this number, but in liters. And now the new concentration of NH3 is 0 0.11 to two significant figures, molar. We have to repeat this process for Cu2+. Remember, in this molecule, we have CuNO32, and it breaks down into Cu2+, plus, plus NO3-. Minus. Balancing this out, we need a 2 in front of NO3-, minus, and it's a 1 to 1 ratio. So I need to find the number of moles of this molecule, and that will represent the number of moles of Cu2+. Plus. Let's do that on the side. So. 0 0.2000, that's the amount of volume in that first solution. Multiply it to its concentration of 1.5 times 10 to the power of negative 3 moles per liter. This and this will cancel out, and we'll get the amount of moles of CuNO32. So multiply that by 1.5 times 10 raised to the power of negative 3. That's the amount of moles of CuNO32, and since it's a one-to-one -one ratio, that's the amount of moles of Cu2 plus as well. I'll take this number and divide it by the volume of 0 0.4500, and we get 6.7 times 10, and we have one, two, three, so negative four molar of Cu2 plus. I wrote down 6.7 because I'm rounding it to two significant figures. Otherwise, it would be 6.666 repeating. And logically, the initial concentration of this stuff 
is nothing. So we'll write down zero. Now that we've filled these numbers in, since the equilibrium constant, if you take a look at this table, the formation constant for Cu and H342 plus is shown right here, 1.7 times 10 to the power of 13. So because this equilibrium constant is so large, and since the concentration of ammonia is much greater than the concentration of Cu2+, look at the table here, we have 0 0.11 versus 6.7 times 10 to the power of negative 4. You can assume that the reaction will be driven to the right, and most of the Cu2 plus is consumed. And unlike in previous ice tables, where we let x represent the change in concentration in going to equilibrium, here you let x represent the small amount of Cu2 plus that remains when the equilibrium is reached. So I'll write down K sub F for the constant of formation is equal to the concentration at equilibrium for this molecule over the concentration of these two molecules multiplied. And don't forget to raise this to the power of 4 because of this coefficient of 4. As mentioned, most of this will disappear, so I'll say that this is approximately negative 6.7 times 10 to the power of negative 4. This will be 4 times negative 6.7 times 10 to the power of negative 4. And since it's moving to the right, where CuNH34 is being produced, we'll write down 6.7 times 10 to the power of negative 4, but it's positive because these are reactants and we're comparing it to the products, so it's always the negative. So be mindful of that. And the reason why we multiply this by 4 is because of that coefficient 4. At equilibrium, this will be x, this will be 0 0.11, and this will be 6.7 times 10 to the power of negative 4. If we substitute those values into this equation, the right side should have the following values. The formation constant, as found here, is 1.7 times 10 to the power of 13. I need to solve for x, so mathematically I'll multiply both sides by x times 0 0.11 raised to the power of 4. That cancels that out, and now it's on this side. I'll multiply 1.7 times 10 to the power of 13 by 0 0.11 raised to the power of 4, and I'll divide both sides of this equation by this large number, so 6.7 times 10 raised to the power of negative 4, divided by the answer that I found, and I get 2.69 to two significant figures is 2.7 times 10 to the power of negative 13. That is the amount of copper left after reacting with NH3. And as predicted, this is much, much smaller than 6.7 times 10 to the power of negative 4, so almost nothing of Cu2 plus remains. And there you have it. If you would like to see the solution to question number two, make sure that you watch question two of this series, and we'll hope to see you soon.